Good evening. For someone who says he's not worried about what's in the Mueller report, the president sure has a lot of staffers and former staffers worried about being named in it and potentially facing his wrath. The CNN chief national correspondent John King was first to report tension is high among those who cooperated with the Mueller probe. And as we're just now learning, White House officials are fearing the president's anger. Keep it honest, the question is why? And we have new reporting on that tonight from the White House. Now, remember, the president repeatedly claims the report completely exonerates him. This afternoon and this morning, he tweeted the same four-word message, no collusion, no obstruction, the second time in all caps. It is the bumper sticker version of a long-running theme. I have not read the Mueller report. I haven't seen the re Mueller report. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care about the Mueller report. I've been totally exonerated. No collusion, no obstruction, and I'm off to dealing with China. I'm off to dealing with North Korea. I'm off to dealing with Venezuela and all the problems in this world. I'm not worrying about something that never, ever should have taken place. Total exoneration, he says. Whether that's true or not, we don't really know. We could know more on Thursday when the redacted report arrives, depending, of course, on the degree of redaction, whether it honestly represents the full document. And we'll get into that tonight as well, because a recently uncovered episode from 1989 involving Attorney General Barr does raise new questions about what we may see on Thursday. But if, in fact, the report says what the president claims it says, despite having never seen it, then why the concern? Why is he lashing out at the investigation on camera and online? And why, as a Republican source tells CNN, are people who cooperated with the investigation now worried that, and I'm quoting now, he's going to go bonkers? Consider that former White House counsel Don McGahn gave 30 hours of testimony to the Mueller team. He obviously was privy to many of the decisions that might have factored into the decision or lack of one on obstruction of justice. The president, as you know, has his own way of describing what used to be called telling the truth about potentially criminal activity to law enforcement. It's called flipping, and it almost ought to be illegal. I know all about flipping. For 30, 40 years, I've been watching flippers. Everything's wonderful, and then they get 10 years in jail, and they, they flip on whoever the next highest one is, or as high as you can go. Well, he said that about Michael Cohen. He's praised his former campaign chairman, now a convicted felon, for, in his words, refusing to break. So it's not unreasonable to believe the president might, as this Republican source worries, go bonkers about what some of his people may have said to Mueller. Now, maybe it's nothing incriminating. Maybe it's just embarrassing. Former insiders have certainly dished up plenty of that in their memoirs, but only under pressure to sell books, not under penalty of perjury. So what is it? A president angry about dirty laundry or dirty deeds or neither? A serene president, Trump, gracious in exoneration and happy with everyone for doing their civic duty and fulfilling their obligation to the public they serve by telling the whole truth. Well, given the tweets and the sound bites and how he reacts in general in advance of damaging news, it's hard to imagine there won't be some sort of reaction to what's been one of the most significant stories of his presidency so far. Our Caitlin Collins has new reporting on all of this night. She joins us now from a White House uh, that is, well, waiting for some sort of an impact. What are you learning, Caitlin? Well, Anderson, we know that President Trump is eager for the report to come out on Thursday because he thinks it's going to back up his claim that he's been exonerated. The people around the president are not so eager to see this report because essentially, even though they have not read it and people have made that clear, they don't know what's going to be in the report. They think at best it's going to paint a pretty unflattering portrayal of what's been going on inside the White House during this investigation. Is there any expectation among White House aides as to, to what will or, or won't be in specifically in the report? Yeah, here's the thing. They do not think it's going to contain any bombshells. They feel like they know where he came down on collusion and on obstruction. But what they're worried about are the details here, because the people inside the White House, people who used to be inside the White House and the president's allies all know that so many of them have sat down with the special counsel for dozens of hours, some of them, and they're going to be able to back this up, what the claims are uh, with statements from them, with dates, with emails, with all of these documents to support what's in this report. So they're worried that the details are what are going to be the damaging aspect here. Not that there's going to be any bombshells, but they're worried it's going to really paint an unflattering portrayal. Of course, what we don't know is the level of detail uh, that, that's in the original Mueller report and might survive any redactions in terms of what people around the president have actually said, how much of what they said would actually be in any kind of a finished report. 
No, they don't know that. They don't know what exactly is going to be redacted. The White House has maintained publicly that they and President Trump still have not read this, still don't know what the redactions are going to be. But they don't think what they, with this testimony that several White House officials, former White House officials, current White House officials, and allies of the president have told the special counsel. Things that could relate to the president's temper or the way he operates inside the West Wing. Things that may not be a big deal, it could not be criminal or anything like that, but that could be embarrassing for the president. And they know how this president is and how he reacts to coverage. So while he's not expected to read this report page by page, he's going to be watching how it plays out in the media and allies fear that he's going to react accordingly and could perhaps take it out on them and grow angry with them based on what they told the special counsel because you've got to keep in mind some of them sat down with Robert Mueller and his team for over 12 hours. So he's not, you're saying he, you've heard he's not expected to read it. I mean, obviously it's yeah. some 400 pages. He's, you know, according to reporting, not a big reader. Um, I, I, if you would think maybe this would be something that would interest him closely, no? Yeah, but people close to the president have noted he's not a big reader, so they're not expecting him to go through this line by line. Instead, his legal team will do that, and then they will brief the president on it. But one thing we have learned from our reporting as we were putting out this piece is that most White House officials say they want to read this report because they're curious about what's in it. But Anderson, they said they might wait until they leave the White House to actually read it. All right, Caitlin Collins, thanks very much. Let's get perspective now from two former White House insiders who know what it's like to have a special counsel in their lives. Clinton White House uh, Press Secretary Joe Lockhart and Clinton Senior Advisor Paul Begala also with us. Former Trump campaign aide Michael Caputo, who also knows what it's like. He testified uh, to the Mueller team. Paul, obviously, we have no idea what people around the president said to Mueller, whether there's anything that should be of concern to the president. Should the people who spoke to Mueller be concerned around the president? It's just a world turned upside down. They seem to be concerned about having told the truth. Now, we know that Paul Manafort lied, he's convicted of it. We know that Mike Flynn lied, he was convicted of it. We know that Rick Gates lied. We know that Michael Cohen lied. We know that George Papadopoulos lied. They were all convicted of it. But I think the rest ought to be given the benefit of the doubt because had they lied, Mueller would have caught them, right? So they, they seem to be worried about the fact that they told the truth. That This is uh, Holy Week, you know, Christ taught, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Apparently this president, the truth shall scare the pants off him. It's really quite uh, topsy-turvy. I mean, Paul, you worked for a president who was known to have flashes of anger, certainly. Right. Uh, I mean, just because somebody tells the truth to the special counsel, right. it doesn't mean that the boss is going to like it. Well, in fact, in that case, everyone who testified told the truth because we know that, because even Ken Starr didn't charge one person, not one person around Bill Clinton with lying about that investigation or that affair. <clears throat> in fact, after the, the report came out, you know what happened? Bill Clinton apologized to me. I'm sure he did to Joe. He apologized to others because he had, in fact, lied about having had that affair. That's how the truth works. You know, th this president needs to apologize to his team for having put them in this uh, awful, awful spot instead of the team worrying that they'll be in trouble for having told the truth. Joe, I mean, it was, what, 20 years ago? You were in the Clinton yeah. White House. Everyone was bracing for the, for the release of the Star Report. Uh, is what we're seeing here, you know, according to this reporting, some anxiety, uh, some concern, similar to, to what you experienced while waiting? I think it's similar in some respects. Paul will remember, because Paul and I were on the same side of this fight, we, we were fighting with the lawyers because they didn't want to put out a rebuttal the day of the report, and they made a valid point, which was, we don't want to be fighting charges that we haven't been charged with. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think at the end of the day, they realized that we needed to have something um, uh, that, that looked at all the exculpatory evidence that hadn't been leaked from uh, the, uh, the grand jury testimony. These guys are in a tough spot, though. I, I mean, I liken this more to, um, you know, uh, President Bush 43 mission accomplished. They've set the bar so high at total exoneration on both obstruction and collusion. And I think what we're going to see is a lot of black redactions, but in between, we're going to see lots of clues about where there was improper. Uh, uh, contact with the Russians and lots of things that we already know about obstruction and maybe a few more. I think Don McGahn feels like the wild card here. 30 hours never debriefed by the White House counsel, the new White House counsel. That's what I think they're worried about.